Uh, but the incident started this afternoon with a burglary call that our Westover Division responded to. And as part of that call, it involved a stolen vehicle. Uh, and we were able to locate that stolen vehicle with the tracker device that was gave us the location. Uh, and at that time began CMPD's involvement and interaction with this individual. Uh, so the individual that was involved, uh, as you know, ended up st stealing several cars or more, I think a total of four cars that were stolen uh, in the process of his attempt to flee from officers. Uh, we had aviation unit that was in place that was able to track this individual. We never lost sight of him uh, between aviation as well as uh, media coverage. Uh, uh, over the, um, uh, through a helicopter that was following the individual and his vehicles that he was in. And just to be certain and to be clear that the pursuit policy that CMPD is, unless it's a crime dangerous to life, uh, we do not pursue those vehicles. It's unusual for a vehicle to continue to drive erratically once we pull away from that vehicle. Uh, but in this case, you, as you saw, uh, this individual continued to drive erratically and put the lives of our citizens in danger. Uh, as we were able to also keep track of that individual through the helicopters uh, in aviation and also through our police units who were following close by. Uh, I want to be clear that uh, I will say that our policy was followed precisely. Uh, I'm proud of the men and women that uh, were involved in this incident. Uh, and just as our goal is that nobody dies and everybody gets to go home, and nobody has serious injuries, that's exactly what occurred today. Uh, so uh, we were able to apprehend a, a, a subject that is going to be arrested, and we will continue to look at the charges for that individual. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, our goal and the reason we have these policies is to ensure that, we, that everybody gets to go home. Uh, and I know there's going to be questions about the length of time uh, of that uh, of the uh, involvement with this individual driving, uh, and I'll be happy to answer those questions. Chief, you said in your statement that a pursuit would have escalated the danger. Do you really believe it could have possibly be any more dangerous than it already was? I mean, he had already run people off the road, caused head-on crashes, carjacked people, was going the wrong way down uh, one-way streets, mm -hmm. into people's yards neighborhoods, pedestrians are walking by, how could it have been any more dangerous? Let me, let me clarify. He carjacked one person uh, but that we, that we believed to be a carjacking, but we found out later that individual, there was nobody in the vehicle. But absolutely, I think once you put blue lights and sirens behind a vehicle, that ramps up the adrenaline of the individual driving. That also causes even more erratic behavior. Uh, but like I said earlier, it's unusual when we take our police cars out of the picture and we simply have the helicopter overhead, it's unusual for to see somebody continue to drive that erratically. So we don't know um, a pursuit. There's, there's no way to say that a pursuit would have stopped this type of driving. Um, so, yeah, it possibly could have been worse, but we also kn knew that we also had the overhead sight with the helicopter. Why were stop sticks used? Stop sticks were attempted to be used on multiple occasions. Uh, the, the driving of this individual, that the, the constant turns and different routes that he was taking. Stop sticks are a very precise device that we have to use, and we have to be able to predict well ahead of time of what direction that vehicle is going in. So we did attempt to use stop sticks. Uh, wish we could have uh, had him roll over those and, and, and had him stop, maybe. Uh, but stop sticks are not a definite that, that the individual is going to stop either. Highway yes, Patrol, did you ask that? Injuries. Which um, one? Do you think there were, no deaths, oh, yes. but there were injuries and crashes. Um, does this warrant a change to your pursuit policy? Do you think it's unclear? Is it too much leeway for officers? What does that look like for you all based on how long this lasted also? No, I think our pursuit policy is clear. It's a crime dangerous to life. We have to weigh the options of uh, if we pursue this individual. And let me say this. If, if we were pursuing this individual and the same crashes occurred, the same incidents occurred, we'd be talking about our pursuit policy right now and why we were chasing this individual. Uh, so we're in a situation where we have to weigh what is the most danger to the public. We felt at that time that having the helicopter view this vehicle and continue to keep this vehicle in sight was going to be the, the, what kept 
out of the most dangerous and more even more erratic behavior if we had blue lights and sirens behind this individual. So, uh, yeah, we're constantly looking at the, the pursuit policy. Our last uh, pursuit policy was put in place and changed in April of this year. So we have constant review uh, based on incidents that we see, uh, and this one will be no different. Uh, we'll take a look at it, uh, but uh, at this point, nothing stands out to me that says that we need to change the pursuit policy. The last thing I want to do is have a police officer behind an individual a vehicle which causes that driving to escalate and someone gets seriously hurt or killed uh, and then we're sitting here talking about that in front of the media today. Uh, Chief, can I ask you about the, the yes. part that you started out with, a crime dangerous to life? Yes. So if you think over the course of, of this pursuit, chase, whatever you want to call it, when he collided with the first vehicle and mm -hmm. was going vehicle, vehicle, vehicle to vehicle to vehicle, trying to, to get into one, I think he was trying to pull somebody out before he got into the black SUV. How do you define a crime that is dangerous to life when you have a, a pretty violent crash and you have someone yeah. trying to carjack? It's a good question. It's a felon. Well, uh, first of all, again, I'll say that these were not carjackings. Um, the, the only thing that we thought was a carjacking was at the end when he got into the SUV that the pursuit was over, when the pursuit ended with the, with the last crash. Uh, and we found out even then that there was no one in the vehicle, which initially we thought, thought there was someone in the vehicle. Uh, a, a crime de dangerous to life or a felony dangerous to life uh, is an armed robbery, a shooting, um, something that someone's life was in danger at the time uh, as far as what the crime was that was committed. Uh, and I know vehicle accidents, yeah, they're dangerous. Um, uh, the, these accidents, fortunately, uh, there was only one person, I think, that was actually sent to the hospital uh, with non-life-threatening injuries, uh, and as well as the suspect himself uh, going to the hospital. So we have to look at all of those factors and weigh all of that in uh, and see that, um, you know, at that point where you're, you're talking about hit and runs that are... Uh, that the suspect's involved in, uh, and those are not, at this time, those are not considered crimes dangerous to life as far as our policy is concerned. Can you touch on the civilian who tried to end the chase? I mean, people were so yeah. frustrated, they were starting to ram the suspect vehicle because it had been going on for so long. Yeah. Uh, can you touch on that for yeah. us? Yeah. I, I, what I can say is I, I never recommend that civilians or individuals in their vehicles get involved in that. That is... That is a dangerous situation. You don't know if that subject is armed. Um, civilians are not trained or equipped to be able to uh, do that. We saw some uh, footage of that individual trying to hit, run into the back of the vehicle several times, uh, and the results were, uh, there, there were no positive results that came from that. There are no positive results that can come from that, uh, because if that individual were to cause a, a collision himself, or herself, whoever that, that subject was, uh, then um, then we're looking at even a more serious issue and more char that charges that could come on that person that was trying to stop the, the pursuit. So. Have you said it for your, that civilian? Not at this time, no. Yes. You said it for yourself that this pursuit was all over Charlotte in many neighborhoods. Why didn't we receive any notifications through your app as that pursuit was going on? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a good question. Uh, there, there actually wasn't a pursuit in, at that point. The pursuit started when the last incident happened where he wrecked his vehicle, got into the SUV, which is the one that he was ultimately crashed and we arrested him. So that's when the pursuit started and the only reason that started at, the pursuit started at that point is because we felt like there was a ch possibility that someone was still in that vehicle and that someone was in danger and kidnapped at that point. Um, so that's when the pursuit uh, officially began. Other than that, it was a helicopter coverage, but uh, as far as pushing information out and letting people know, I'm, I don't have an answer for you on that, but we can figure that one out. Could you, uh, Chief, uh, have involved Highway Patrol at any point as, you know, part of this went on to the interstate? Yeah. Um, they do have a different, much different policy from the CMPD. At any point, did you all reach out to them? And if not, why not? Yeah, Highway Patrol is certainly an option in any of our pursuits, particularly when they get on the interstate. But uh, the majority of the time, if we're if we're handling that situation within CMPD, we don't. We also have to make sure that they have the resources that are here 
to be able to fall in line with that pursuit. But I, I will say that part of our policy also is if another agency gets involved in the pursuit that is not consistent with our policy, then we will discontinue any uh, any of that interaction. We weren't prepared to do that. We weren't prepared to turn that over uh, because we felt like with the helicopter coverage uh, that we were able to keep this individual uh, in, in, intact. And uh, someone mentioned stop sticks earlier. Uh, we were making attempts to get in position to use the stop sticks. But outside of, of, of that, uh, this is a very dangerous situation that regardless of what we do, we know that at the very end of it, there's going to be skeptics and critics that, that feel like we should have done something differently. My goal in this situation, uh, which is what happened, is that nobody died today. And that's important to me, and that's what should be important to the public. And I realize that, uh, I realize that the, the um, anxiety that many of people had while they were out in the streets when this was going on, but I do still feel that if we would have engaged in a pursuit, uh, and had blue lights and sirens behind this individual, it could have made matters much worse than it was. Could you reiterate each crash and what it was classified by CMPD's um, language, carjacking versus a stealing, so that we can know what each crash was classified as and then tell us when you all started the pursuit for clarity purposes for everyone? Yeah, so each, each of the crashes, I, that, that's a simple question because I can tell you that uh, each of the crash, crashes that were involved or I'm sorry, each of the auto thefts that this individual was involved in, none of them involved him pointing a weapon at someone and, and pulling someone out of a vehicle uh, or taking their vehicle while they were still in the vehicle. So when someone jumps into a vehicle that's already running, that's not occupied, that's an auto theft. Um, when someone, if someone drags you out of the vehicle or points a weapon at you to take your vehicle, then that's what that's a that's an armed robbery, but basically is what people refer to as carjacking. Um, in the end, when all of this was said and done, uh, none of those incidents involved any type of armed robberies because uh, the reason, again, I'll say it again, the reason we pursued that last vehicle was because we felt like there was a possibility that someone was still in that vehicle, and that that's what we felt that that ramp this up to say that now we're sitting within our policy to pursue uh, and we we began to pursue then and quickly after that not long after that he crashed uh, once again into another vehicle which allowed us to be there and make that arrest and he he surrendered at that point uh and subdued to our officers you talk about the suspect, the suspect yes yes Can you talk about the suspect you have a name i, I don't right now we'll, we are going to be releasing all that the suspect was transported to the hospital uh, I know he had some injuries, just don't know which crash uh, he obtained those injuries, but uh, he was transported. He was treated on the scene uh, and then um, transported for further evaluation. There was a woman was he with him at any point? Yeah. Let's, let's go with Mike. Right yeah. There was a woman yes. with him early on. We saw her yes. in the back of the squad car. Is she being charged too? She's being her? charged as well. She's, she's, she was taken into custody after, I think, the second uh, vehicle that was stolen. She, didn't, she did not get into uh, another vehicle. Well, let me just say this. I, I, I say she's being charged. I know she's down. We were able to um, detain her uh, and question her, so I, I don't know the end results of her interviews and, and what else was, took place after that. He, was he armed at any point? I, I don't believe he was. I don't know. I can't tell you for certain whether he was or not. Uh, but it, th throughout the entire incident, uh, there was never any indication to, to me or to uh, over the air that he was uh, armed with any type of weapon. So. so you were aware of this incident throughout? You, were you watching this throughout? Yes, I was. Yes. Chief, well, you... not, not, not the whole time, but yes, I did, I did, watch, um, I did watch a good portion of it. What so. were you thinking as it was unfolding? Uh, as it was unfolding, my, my thoughts were the, uh, geared more towards the individual, you know, and I knew that our officers and our people that were on the scene and command that were working it, uh, were staying within our guidelines and policies. I was very happy with, with the response that we were that we had at that moment. Uh, but um, you know, I hold responsibility on the individual that had a total disregard for the safety of our citizens out there. And I think that's what the story is: is that you have somebody that is uh, that is disrupting the the uh, the safety of our citizens who are out doing their normal activities throughout the day. Uh, and uh, this person 
needed to be apprehended, and he was apprehended, and he was taken to he was taken to the hospital, and ultimately would be taken to jail. Chief, you talk about the last incident. Um, how yes. does that process go? Is it your decision, or is it collective, like to initiate that? Yeah, well, we have an incident command that uh, that is controlling all of that over the radio. If I see or, or hear something that I disagree with or I don't like, we have ways that we can get, communicate that information uh, to either change up, you know, what we're doing or how we're doing it. So uh, at that point, I, I had no concerns. I was confident in our command that was leading it and our supervisors who were directing it. Uh, the things that I was hearing in the direction that I was hearing over the radio uh, were consistent with everything that, that I feel like uh, I would have done myself had I been in charge and, and in command of that uh, pursuit. So, and what yes. exactly is he being charged with? What he's being charged with, he'll be charged with multiple things. And, uh, but what I will tell you right now is that that's not probably not even all set yet. Uh, as we go through the investigation, continue to try and do interviews, continue to clean up uh, the, the collisions that we saw out there, uh, I will tell you that, um, uh, that those charges will be coming out probably very soon. Uh, and, and you know, I, you know, just offhand, I can tell you that um, uh, residential burglary uh, is what initiated this. He was a suspect in that. He also stole a vehicle. So uh, um, uh, auto theft, there'll probably be multiple counts of auto theft, and there'll probably be multiple counts of hit and run as well. Uh, what goes on top of that is also going to be dependent on uh, how these interviews go and what else we see uh, throughout the uh, video and as we review this case. Uh, knowing what yes. you know about the charges so far, is there a bond amount that would be satisfactory to you? And <laughs> do you know... Yeah. How many cars involved in this on your end had dash cams active? Well, we don't have dash cams in our vehicles. We they all have body cams. So it, our policy is to ensure that everyone that was involved or responding uh, in, in any way have their body cameras on. So we'll be reviewing that. Uh, and then what I will uh, tell you is you talk about the bond. Uh, my hope is that there is not, there's not a bond. Uh, and I hope that we find uh, additional, this is, this is, I can almost be certain that this is not the first time this individual has been involved in something like this. And I can also tell you without even knowing him that I'm sure that when we review this, it would not surprise me at all that if he doesn't have a long sheet, rap sheet, that he's a long history of either breaking and entering or other crimes that are similar. Do you have any indication that he was impaired in any way? I, I do not at this time. I don't know. So, Last question please, back please. here. Um, we'll get to you. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to At you. what speeds was he going, and is this qualified as a high-speed chase? Well, again, the chase was initiated after the last one. I do know that it, you know, I was watching it on TV and listening to the radio, just like many of you, uh, and I did see some excessive speeds uh, that I can only guesstimate right now what they, those were. Uh, we do, we will have. Uh, throughout our coverage uh, through the helicopter and our officers that were behind the vehicles, the vehicles that he was in, uh, can get some uh, estimates on speeds and probably some more even accuracy on the speeds according to uh, collisions and all that that we were able to look at. So uh, I don't know what those speeds are, but uh, I can tell you that it certainly did not appear to me that he was going the speed limit for a lot of those times. So. And yes, last question. Thank you. Yes. From your perspective, would you say that this was a flawless response by CMPD, or would you say there was room for improvement? Wow, uh, absolutely nothing is flawless. And I will tell you uh, that uh, uh, we, we are in a society now where perfection is expected amongst our, our, our officers. Uh, that's fine. We welcome that. But we're never going to get there because we are human beings as well. Uh, so no, I, I'm not going to ever say that something was flawless. Uh, I do know that there are areas to improve that we will look at, as we always do. And, you know, this, this received a lot of attention be simply because it was shown live uh, on the air and, and a lot of people were involved in a lot of locations and it lasted for a long time. Uh, my hope is that uh, we are able to uh, resolve these a lot quicker. Uh, but as I said, it's, it is unusual for someone that when we back off and we are not uh, no longer uh, by, right by, directly behind this individual to continue driving in that fashion just showed his disregard for for the safety of our public so 
Uh, thank you all for being here, and have a good day.